and we are live brian i predict there's going to be some buzzword carnage here today my <laughs> friend you predict that on a call that's all about the unpredictions i mean how uh, how atypical um anyway john as always uh, for the listeners who didn't know this uh, this is the sixth time we've done the annual predictions deal I never thought that uh, poking fun of things would get to be such a regular kind of thing. And uh, I'm embarrassed to say that so many Diginomica readers really look forward to this, maybe even more so than our, the regular serious articles that we do. Um, well, Brian, I think people basically lose their tolerance for the endless stream of prognosticating propaganda and uh, guru level insights that we're getting from these predictors who uh, uh, missed the pandemic amongst many other predictions they got wrong. Yep. We yeah. got the ties on Sandy. Yep. This is a big deal. Uh, to be honest with you, I was going to spend even more time on my wardrobe, but I was busy <laughs> posting the own predictions, but I am wearing a tie because Brian has gotten across many occasions that if you're not wearing a tie, you're not taking the event serious. So we are going for it. Uh, that's got to be that may be the only tie you own, John, because I've seen that in pictures. There's a picture of you where you look like you're part of uh, ACDC that must be a eight year old photo with that same yellow tie on it. But anyway, um, it's a fave, no, no, no doubt about it, it. It is, it is a classic. Yep, yep, yep. Brian, you're being accused of wearing a tie in bed and in the swimming pool. So, uh, <laughs> well, uh, I don't know how that reader uh, knows that, uh, but I can't. Uh, I, I'm not going to comment on that. Comment. Uh, hey, so, uh, so, so this is actually a special occasion today. We are unveiling and publishing our annual unpredictions. Uh, and we're also going to give you all a crack to contribute a few of yours late in the game here as we go. Uh, so let's shift over to our slides, Brian. Behind That's right, scenes. folks. Yep, folks, it is, uh, it's Brian and John once again, and we're going to give you that special behind-the-scenes peek into the making of our annual unpredictions uh, list. Now, some may think that there's no science to this at all, but actually it's a very well-disciplined and honed kind of methodology that we follow. Anyway... We're going to get right into it. As you can see, John and I, from this recent photo, are just really, you know, looking forward to these awards and, and um, that we're going to hand out. John. Yes. So, so Brian, we're always motivated by the high bar that other people set in our inbox. Uh, these are <laughs> these are real predictions that we've received. Uh, I the other day I got brands must be willing to accept change and evolve in order to survive. If there's one thing we've learned during the pandemic, so uh, we're going to provide some rare insight, Brian. It is something that's puzzled tech vendors and puzzits pundits for years. How can two guys, you and me, get things so wrong and yet somehow be the only ones to get them right? <laughs> Well, I mean, you know, uh, our process, for those who didn't know, it starts all the way back in usually October when our inboxes already started to get filled with a bunch of pretty weak uh, sort of, um, they call them predictions, but uh, they're usually something quite a bit less than that. And these come from PR firms, software vendors, people that are futurist, and others who want to send, you know, share their, as John likes to call it, ninja uh, ninja caliber predictions with us and I'll let, uh, you know, well, John, what do you think of the accuracy of these kind of predictions? Uh, they are uncanny. <laughs> they, are, they, they have a way, they have a way of being right every year. Den is uh Den's wondering about the slides, Brian. I mean, we went for real here yet. Yeah, we got a, we got a hundred slide deck for you guys today. Uh, hope, you, <laughs> hope you don't drop off halfway through. Uh, by the way, uh, Den has done, a, done his homework. He's done a bang-up job of getting some early predictions in uh, on, on the post, and you guys are welcome to issue a few um, predictions of your own. So I'll be sending a link so you can check out a few of – I'm going to read read a few of Den's too because Den's got some good ones for us here. So, um, Well, it, Jen's, Den's comments notwithstanding, most of the time, John, these predictions that we get in our inboxes, they are just atrocious. They're usually obvious as all get out. They're older than sin. Uh, you know, they are uh, so, some are terribly self-serving. Most of them aren't very original. 
And uh, surprisingly, they're usually wrong most of the time. So that's what kind of gets our sparkle meter going haywire, you know, at every time of, you know, we get to this part of the year uh, with looking at these. And uh, yeah, and, and for the last two years, we've done something different because we wanted to give everybody a jump start on on making their own. So, Brian, we've got the unpredictions generator. This is last year's up here. Right. <laughs> Well, you know, uh, yeah, we get can it. You tell the peeps how this works. Yeah, it's uh, it's real tough, folks. Uh, for all you technical people, this may be really hard to follow. You just pick a word out of every one of these five columns, and you can string it all together across the page to make a killer unpredictions uh, deal. Now, we already uh, have one, Brian. Breaking <laughs> news: distributed distributed autonomous organizations use Web three and blockchain to fuse John and Brian into a predictive megalith. Woo. Well done, Greg. Brian, did you take a crack at the one this year? I've got one that I did from this year's. Oh, uh, by all means, share yours. Yes. Uh, I got um, hybrid data-driven chatbots maximize social distancing. So that's... <laughs> That, well, that's and, hot, and, that's, that is hot off the presses, folks. And uh, we we only point this out because last year when we released the unpredictions deal on Digenomica, uh, people really glommed on to the unpredictions generator and were coming up with any number of uh, possible answers and putting them out there on uh, Twitter. And in fact, I'd encourage you, you know everyone. You can see there's my Twitter address on the you know, by my picture here. Uh, if you want to come up with a combination using either last year's or this year's uh, unpredictions generator, you know, uh, we, we definitely looking forward to seeing the unique combinations of potential unpredictions out there. Uh, Nicole actually I, has a question. She wants to know if there are any jargon additions to the, to the columns uh, from, from the, this year, Brian. Yeah, in fact, uh, this was one of my babies uh, I worked on this year. I built that unpredictions generator for 2022, and I went out of my way to try and avoid any redundancy with last year's. So, Nicole, it's going to be uh, we're we're busting into virgin unpredictions territory with the kind of things that you can come up with, and we encourage marketers everywhere are going to be able to find a whole bunch of five word euphemisms to just sprinkle throughout their press releases and uh, software user conferences. Nicole, one of your favorites, I think, is going to be talent intelligence because we've finally gotten to the point where we're truly making intelligent hires automatically. So, <laughs> so. What most oh, many Nicole people wants, Nicole wants headless. All right, headless. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, yeah. See, we'll see what we can do. We'll we'll get we'll get a customized chart out to you. Uh, <laughs> actually, we have a bot that might be able to do that. I'll debut that in a little bit. So, in case you guys didn't know, we we actually take some time to figure out what are the words are going to go in the, this generator. We look at everything. We look at what's on flare pins. We look at uh, Mad Magazine, Dilbert Comics. Uh, we look at press releases, all kinds of stuff, looking for clues. And, um, you know, and I know even John's looking at things like LinkedIn skills endorsements uh, because there's nothing like looking at one of those to come up with BS names. And I know that's my initial, but BS names on uh, new j kinds of job descriptions we've never seen before. There's another, you know, source for inspiration. Yeah. And, you know, eventually it just starts rolling. So, for example, um, in the in, in the comments, Dan Hallett threw out a bunch of them. Uh, I like this one from Dan. <clears throat> the office of the CFO will open its doors to marketers, offering them a smorgasbord of lockdown spreadsheets with which to figure out their product strategies. That is written by a true unpredictions pro right there. <laughs> well done. Adam, Adam Belated, thanks to Dennis. He, he actually submitted... Uh, four or five that we ran with last year uh, on the unpredictions list, which was impressive considering he was well on the way to retiring, but apparently you just can't keep the new tech out of the old uh, industry analyst. So we, uh, you know, folks, the point of this, and I know what you're really hungry to learn about the 2022 ones, but what we do is we look at all this and we start crafting, we have a process for crafting the unpredictions. Immersive personalization explosion begins low hanging fruit. I love that. Um, uh, Nicole's really into the spirit of this. I can tell today. Yeah. Uh, but what we do, 
is uh, we look at these things and uh, these inspire us to come up with the germ, if you will, uh, the core of a new unprediction for the next year. So uh, it could be something like this. Now, this is the initial rough draft that we would formulate for a potential article. And you can see it up here. Cheesemongers worldwide negatively reacted to Facebook's rebranding to Meta. Why? They initially saw a typo and thought it'd be called Feta. Gourmands everywhere were relieved to learn the truth. And from that... <laughs> You know, we decide, well, it's a little long. We need to tune it up. So the first edit might be something like this. Old school software developers will change beta, beta testing to mate. Oh, it's got a typo and it should be meta testing. But anyway, if it were perfect, it wouldn't be, a, you know, it would be an unprediction, It'd be a fact, I guess. And then you can, you know, I'm not going to read all these out here, but you can see what the second edit looks like. And uh, this is where Zuckerberg thinks he wants to call it Meta because Meta will stand for make everything truly accretive. Uh, anyway, we go through this process where we constantly keep tuning them up over the last few weeks until we get to that, until we get to a crisp list of finalists, uh, which actually uh, makes the thing uh, really, really sing. Brian, should we show, should we show them how? How, how the sausage really gets made here in the fortress oh yeah yeah we can go yeah we can definitely do that uh now this is our uh you, you're not supposed to see this but this is a rare photo uh the diginomica fortress solitude here uh mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, and uh this is where our crack team of industry watchers pour over everything you want to take it from there john well, what's really incredible is the streaming 5G services that we're able to achieve, Brian, within this domain of excellence. So with that in mind, uh, we then spread those unpredictions into what we would consider the finest of the finest. And then we save a bunch off the cutting room floor. And in fact, today, before we wrap up here, we are going to be sharing with you uh, each of our all-time favorite um, predictions, which was like a very, very arduous, arduous task. And I actually even got a, my old, um, like, foosball trophy because what's the, op <laughs> what's the opposite of a pinnacle award, Brian? It's the nadir. Nadir, yeah. And, and, uh, that's, where, that's where we're headed now. Well, before oh, actually, we... Dan, Dan recognizes the slide. Actually, Dan, that's not too far, I don't think, from now. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, from, uh, from, your, from your old stomping grounds in Spain, actually. Yeah, and, and then if um, if that's your house, you've been living, you've been alive now a couple of hundred thousand years. Then I, uh, that thing's been around almost two thousand years. That structure. Um, but before we jump right into the awards here, I, you know, I want people to realize that. Um, you know, inside the Fortress of Solitude, we've got folks from legal looking at these things to make sure that the snark is not too personal. We've got folks looking at ways to add additional snark, come up with appalling irreverence and satirical mirth. And, you know, I remember we had so much excess energy going last year that we ended up creating a whole new section for the deal, which was around TV and film, you know, that we're going to come out, you know, with a technology theme. And I mean, who can forget keeping up with the Kubernetes? I mean, that was one that was, uh, they got a lot of plug quite a while. And it's just a shame that your sequel that you wanted to see Kubernetes 2 compliance hurts, and, you know, that got tied up in post-production. Anyway, let's show them what happens at the end. What does it look like when we get to the end of all of this, uh, you know, uh, prediction generation effort here? Well, when we finally get to the very end, the cream of the crop, it kind of looks like this. Yeah, it is clearly a mess. And um, I, I, I got to tell you, folks, you wouldn't believe how many, you know, rejected unpredictions there are. There are some. There are clearly some violent disagreements that occur, you know, that occur, and and the damage to marriages and relationships is unbelievable, and that's just within our own team. You wouldn't believe what how some vendors can get offended by these. Anyway, so uh, so folks, as far as Dens are concerned, he made one about Brian, and Brian, I'm a little worried you're actually gonna act on this one. But he says Brian will keynote a conference on AI in a cravat playing a modern day classical ditty on a Stradivarius violin <laughs> as a throwback metaphor for Sherlock Holmes looking for clues about AI reality. The crowd will applaud rapturously while having no idea what Brian is trying to convey. The conference workers will be glad they didn't sign up Nigel Kennedy. 
I'm a little mm. scared that that actually might come true because we do have a weird thing where every now and then our predictions do seem to cross the finish line. If you want to see the rest of Den's predictions, you can check out the post there. Uh, Den, I'm not going to read the one about incontinence. Sorry. <laughs> Wow. Uh, all right. Well, that, you know, bottom line is we do have a whole litany of these that don't make the final cut. Uh, but uh, anyway, I think it's, uh, I think we're at that time where let's share what we think the top five or the top six are, I guess, from each of us. And that's, we're picking the best one in our opinion from the last six years we've been doing this. So, John, you want to kick it off? Well, let's go all the way back uh, to when we did the first one of these uh, pieces back in December 2016. What really stood out for you? All right. And uh, just so you know, I'm not sure if I did like one per year quite right. I might have gotten that a little mixed up. But anywho, um, my first one I picked was a vendor will be taken aback when a customer tells them, I can't wait to see what your expensive AI prototype can do for me. <laughs> yeah and uh and to think that was in 2016 and we're still waiting for a lot of those vendors to come out with ai tools i thought the one um i thought the one that was really that really got me back then was an analyst firm will issue their brand new vendor ranking system the predictive parallelogram a competing analyst firm vowing not to be outdone offers up their tetrahedral pyramid of technology excellence and um, if anything has stood the test of time, it's that we are drowning in quadrants and waves and curves and cycles and so forth. So that's the one I like from 2016. Yeah, if anything, I'd say that one came came true, actually, unfortunately. Um, all right, so do we go on to our next top pick? Yeah, let's go 2017. What did you like? User conference attendees get grumpy when told their lunch will be served in small chunks via an array of microservices. Mm. Uh, it's, it's interesting too. Yeah. Brian, how, it's interesting too how we still haven't found too many great use cases for microservices, but it probably would work for for saving on the lunch budget. So there is that. Well, I, you know, every time I read that, it makes me wince because I think about some of the horrible flat meat sandwiches or non-existent food that you see at so many of these conferences. So if there ever was an area for improvement, uh, you know, for a, a vendor in their events, it's got to be in the, in the food service side. I liked um, that year. I liked um I liked the one that said, we've got an algorithm for that, and that's going to be the enterprise software meme for 2018. And <laughs> I still am waiting to see some of those come true, too. Oh, yeah. We actually, uh, we, we do have in the unpredictions every year, we have the ultimate enterprise pickup line. Uh, if you guys would like to know what this year's are. Uh, they change every year, obviously, because pickup lines do go stale after a point. Uh, the ultimate enterprise pickup line is going to change once again from if you're feeling hyper, I can scale to, uh, and Brian and I each have a favorite. My fave was how low can you code? Brian's, yeah. is, <laughs> Brian's is, would you like to experience this, this employee? Yeah, because employee experience is the hot thing right now. Um, all right. Well, let's try, uh, let's move the clock forward one more notch. Let's go to December 2018, three years ago. Uh, bring back big okay. data. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see what was next for me. Uh, an ERP vendor's development team goes into crisis when this new intelligent analytics solution suggests that the next next best action is to destroy itself. I like that one. Um, I had two that really tore at me to, to see which one I really loved on on that year. There was one, though, that had me laughing when you and I did this one collaboratively on the phone, and it still strikes me good today, and that is vendors back away from the term immersive experience after rumors surface of users drowning in their own data lakes. I loved it then. I love it now. <laughs> yeah, I'm surprised that one got past legal, actually. Uh, <laughs> I, I and, the, 
And the other one I love that year, and I hate to go, you know, I hate to break the protocol here and do two in one year, but there was one we also did that. There was number nine digital twins give way to triplets due to a bizarre IVF mix up. I still think that one is, is uh, right up there in the ridiculousness of, um, of these kind of unpredictions. That was actually uh, one of the ones I, I had both of the digital twins and immersive experience ones I had as my finalist, but I have some other ones too. So that, that was classic. All right. So, um, so we have two more to go. Yep. 2019. What, uh, December, 2019, we were doing the unpredictions for 2020. What was your number one? Giving up on the gra holy grail of intelligent apps for the intelligent enterprise, a vendor will finally issue its line of semi-intelligent apps for the semi-intelligent enterprise. Tell you what, John, you got completely mangled. Uh, can you? You might. Oh, did my audio you... come out bad? Yeah, and okay. your video is actually frozen at the moment too. So oh, did I freeze up. Weird. I wonder if. Yeah, my, but you're uh... looking. But you look better than ever right now. Uh, how's okay, the, how's how the audio? <laughs> It's okay. Uh, okay. All right. Shall I try again? Yeah. All right. Giving up on the holy grail of intelligent apps for the intelligent enterprise, a vendor will finally issue its line of semi-intelligent apps for the semi-intelligent enterprise. Mm -hmm. I like. To, I think this was one of yours. A group of robots walks out of an enterprise software event to protest an all-human panel. I love that one too. Uh, you know. <laughs> because we're starting to see so many bots showing up, uh, answering questions and doing demos. In fact, it's really hard now to find a live person doing demos. They just sit there and let the uh, automatic stuff run on its own. Brian, uh, the, the audience is uh -oh. troubleshooting and they're troubleshooting. They've spotted your internet as the culprit here. So anyway, we're going to, you're holding up okay though. So I think we're going to press on um, since we're close to the wrap of, that anyway, though, I thought we should probably share a couple of the uh, the new new technical terms from the new one, too. Um, OK, so my final one that I picked was uh, I think you actually did this one for me, but it was always one of my favorites. John gets booted from an analyst summit when his emotional support Shetland pony kicks five <laughs> software executives each, each time they say the word synergy. <laughs> I remember that so well. And I, uh, the first time I read it in one of our drafting sessions, I, I, you know, it took me back because I didn't realize you had an emotional support Shetland pony, but, um, you and I have, oh, you uh, <laughs> Yeah, thank you, Enter uh, LinkedIn user. Yeah, you're right. It's my Bitcoin Bitcoin mining that's screwing it up. Um, so yeah, that's good. Uh, yeah, I remember that Shetland Pony one. That one had me laughing uh, for quite a while. Um, I uh, I had this one. Um, I took the one data warehouses were replaced by data lakes. Data lakes were replaced by data oceans. Soon data oceans will be replaced by data planets. And we can't wait to see the backup drive for that one or where you put it. And, uh, you know, it's just let's take the absurdity all the way to its, you know, ultimate level there. Anyway, well, that folks should give you a taste. I know those were, you know, from the past. And like John said, you got all the new ones out there today. Uh, did they come out yet, John? Yeah, I'm just pasting in the link. You can also find it on the Diginomica homepage. I withheld it till towards the end of our little broadcast today uh, because I wanted to make sure that people didn't get distracted from our exciting con visual content here. Uh, but uh, in all seriousness, for all, all the people on the chat, um, you know, I, I don't think I would really enjoy being in this industry if it weren't for the clever, smart, brilliant people that are gathered here today that have just made our lives a lot better. So uh, definitely wishing you all happy holidays and glad you're a part of this uh, first ever video companion piece to the unpredictions, which uh, probably needs some uh, refining. But uh, hey, we're, we're learning. Um, anyhow, uh, Brian, do we want to read anything from the tech terms? I thought we had some good ones from the tech terms from this year maybe throw a drop a few of those before we head out uh go ahead and start because i need to find uh I, I need to 
oh, just go on just want... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, actually, uh, and Brian, I actually have a surprise for you. I p- there's a there's a new one in there because I realized right before publication we didn't have a single thing about 5G in our entire piece and i and i think we're going to hear a lot about 5g we're going to hear a lot of 5g propaganda this year so uh so i actually added a, a fresh term it's called jive g <laughs> we're going to start hearing that. It's, it's a derogatory term consumers have been using and discussed as telecoms 5g propaganda falls short of reality so jive g has been added to the list so you heard it here first brian I like it. Uh, and I got to tell you, it surprises me sometimes to see how far back we were talking about some things that we still can't take delivery of, if you will, even now. Uh, yeah, I'm I, sure think we, we, I think we took our first shot at 5G in like 2018 or something. But anyway. Yeah. Um, oh, and Tim I, was I like, like, I like Tim, them. I like I do like those made up words because uh, uh, some of them actually come to pass i know uh revrec which was big in the financial accounting um uh space uh, asc 606 you know that was a topic every vendor in the finance area <laughs> 5g and alley g okay i like that um every vendor out there was uh you know bending our ear on revrec a few years back and then uh, we came out with the rev w-r-e-c-k and um that was a nice. Uh, that was a nice twist there. But we've had a bunch of them that have been just wickedly good. Um, and I didn't. I don't have all the year's predictions in front of me. I can't just quickly jump back and look at those. But those new words are hilarious, uh, nonetheless. I do want to do uh, a couple more. I'm going to do one that was a hat tip. Uh, Dan Hallett, you might recognize this one. You actually have a credit in the article for for me liberally using your your uh, trademark term there. One of the new terms for this year, Brian, is customer sucks less. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's a more accurate alternative to so-called customer success programs. That's a Den Howlett special, the sucks less term. Thanks, dude. So, John, I just toggled over to the Diginomica site, and yeah, we're in the big box on the top left. So we got the uh, we got yeah, the yeah, top we are got the top promotion spot there. That's a nice placement, and uh, considering that there's nothing terribly newsworthy about this, um, uh, anyway, that's fantastic. Um, I, you know, on all the new made up words this year, I kind of liked uh, tick tick. Uh, that was the oh, one yeah. that's. Not a clone of TikTok, but a new app that senses if you have Lyme disease after all. Anyway, I thought that one was a nice one. Um, and there are some, you know, there's plenty of them in there. There's plenty of them in there. So, folks, um, you're probably all cheating and jumping over there anyway. Um, but, uh, you know, I don't know how much more we need to keep on here. I will tell you that we did have some delicious ones that we did not use. Uh, I had one. Uh, about an ERP vendor, and John said I couldn't use it unless we made fun of every ERP vendor. So that one, unfortunately, had to die. But if you want to know what it is, send me a private message or whatever on um, uh, LinkedIn or email. I'll be happy to share that with you or Twitter. Yeah, um, hey, hey, if you if you're feeling salty one day, just pop that out on the social feed. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, like I said, folks, we we have dozens of these that never made it to the uh, across the finish line. All right, John, is there anything else we need to cover today? Uh, no, I think we've overstayed our welcome. But uh, but thanks everyone for joining us. It was fun to give us a try, and and uh, and thanks for your spicy chat contributions. And and Alan is uh, suggesting that we start offering jargon as a service. Uh, you know. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I want to really thank everybody on the audience. This was a, I like the, the very interactive nature of things today. That was uh, right up there. So thank you everyone for contributing. And as always uh, in the years past, if you guys want to come up with something throughout the year that you think needs to be in the unpredictions list, send it to us. Just stay away from the obvious things, things, you know, like applica- more and more applications, <laughs> more and more applications are moving to the cloud. Uh, you know, I don't need that, but we'll take all the snarky ones you got. Uh, Eric, uh, sorry we didn't get enough overhyped buzzwords in there for you, but don't worry, man. There's there's always more. There's only so many we can dismantle in a half an hour. But uh, but thanks everyone for joining. It was great to see everyone. Have a great holiday.
Yep. Thanks, everybody. And 